Hey there, everybody. Welcome to After The Mix. I am Angela Sharp, and this is really exciting. I have Matthew Perlman with me, and you're probably wondering what he does. Well, he does everything. He has interviewed how many musicians and athletes? About a thousand. About a thousand of them. And how many books do you have published? Three. I'm currently the only person on the set that doesn't have a book published right now. All right, you have to back me up. When did you decide you wanted to start interviewing athletes and musicians? Well, I knew when I, uh, when I wanted to start writing, I was 11 years old. And uh, that kind of transport, uh, transformed into interviewing athletes and singers. But I mean, I've always had like the passion to write. And then I thought interviewing would be a pretty cool thing to do. Interviewing is the most fun thing I think in the whole world to do, but I didn't do it at 11. So <laughs> that's really impressive. Who helped you? Did anybody help you get started or do you pretty much do this on your own? I mean, I sent tons of requests out through, you know, phone, email, but, you know, I had my dad's expertise, you know, of helping me out. It was a whole kind of family project at first. And so, yeah, I just, it's a lot of hard work sending, you know, to all these managers and athletes themselves. So, yeah. Yeah, so I was going to ask you, how do you secure an interview with a, somebody who normally wouldn't talk to me? <laughs> Send out a lot of requests and, you know, don't take no as an answer. Because, you know, at first I was rejected a whole lot of times. But, I mean, you really can't let that discourage you. So, um, I mean, one day Brett Hall, who's a, you know, blue... I love Brett Hall! Yeah, yeah, he just called my house and he, and he let me interview him. So, after that, it was kind of like smooth sailing, but... Uh, yeah, it was definitely a lot of hard work and I did get rejected a lot, but... Do you think you got re re rejected a lot in the beginning because you're so young? Uh, I mean, I think that's a part of it. Some people won't take me seriously, but the people who do kind of find out that, you know, this kid's, you know, real, you know, he's, you know, pretty good. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, I think, I think, it, I think it's good. That's awesome. And we got you, that's you and Joe Nichols, right? Yeah. Interviewing Joe Nichols. I love yeah. Joe Nichols. Yeah. He's cool. All right, so... Who are some of the, name, just name drop. Be a name dropper real quick. Name drop some of the people you've interviewed. Uh, for this third book, Nelly, Nelly Furtado, Sarah McLaughlin. That, I mean, it, it's, it's quite amazing because I kind of switched over from interviewing athletes to singers. And just, you know, it, it's amazing that these singers would allow you know, me to interview them when I've never interviewed a singer in my life. So letting you know, you know, me interview them is a pretty amazing thing. That's cool. Well, so who was who the one person? There has to be at least one person that kind of geeked you out. Like you're like, so excited, a super big fan of who? Ah, uh, nobody. Nelly. Nelly. I mean, because every every singer I interview, it's such a huge deal to me because I listen to her music every day. So talking to him is huge. But I mean, Nelly, I've always followed, you know, pretty much all of his songs. My family is a huge fan of his. So being able to interview him was, you know, a huge honor. And uh, but I mean, that that goes for every singer. Every singer I interview. I appreciate them allowing me to interview them, so. That's awesome. Now, so you took your knowledge of these interviews and you put them into three separate books. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the three books and then show us this last one you've got here. So my first book came out, um, I got, uh, like, I do interviews for my website, teensonsports.com, and all the interviews I gathered from there, I put into that first book and kind of, you know, organize it and put all my interviews from every athlete I've ever interviewed or most of them. Uh, I'm a huge mixed martial arts fan, so my second book was called Talking Mixed Martial Arts. And cool. Yeah, so I, I've already interviewed tons of fighters before that book, but I figured it'd be pretty cool to show people that there are more to fighters than just punching people in the face. Right. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, that was my second book. And the third book, Backstage and Behind the Scenes, yeah, it was just a whole different route and just a huge idea that, you know, it's been pretty successful where I've interviewed singers for the first time. Right, and there, there's the cover of your book right there. Where can someone find this book or the other, the first two? Where can they get these? Uh, Amazon and Barnes & Noble are the two, two main places. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Now, now with this one, what is the coolest thing you learned from a rock star or a singer? Well, I mean, I watch tons of movies on musicians, and we don't really get to like talk to them all the time. But I feel like um, what's amazing is like they're just regular people, and you usually think of them as being like these huge famous people who don't talk to anyone and just sing. But there's like more to them than just you know singing and all that. They're regular people, you know, who do right. Like, they're just things. normal everyday people. So, how would you suggest someone? Maybe somebody doesn't want to interview them like you do. That would be a little scary, but maybe somebody just wants to say, hey, like you do a good job. Well, how would you suggest someone go about that? I mean, just relax, because you know, I get nervous every single time I get an interview or speak to a musician. I mean, just relax and work hard. You know, even if you just want to say hi, you know, work hard, try to, try to meet them. You know, just, just relax. calm down. Yeah, there's normal people. <laughs> No and you mentioned your website, teensonsports.com. You are getting a lot of unique visitors to your website. Mm -hmm. Like over, I think they said 300,000. Mm -hmm. How are you How are you doing that? How are you getting your name out there? I mean, <laughs> just hard work. I mean, hard work would really solve anything in life. Um, I like that. That's a good motto. Yeah. I mean, 
I, I'm really fortunate to have fans and people who visit my site. You know, I work hard in every interview I do. So, you know, having an audience and people who I can tell appreciate it, it, it it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Well, what's next for you? What's, what's your next goal? Well, junior year is really hard. <laughs> I got to work on ACT, do well on the ACT. But right, then, you got to worry about college and all that good yeah. stuff. But then I'm going to do an add-on to this, uh, to my book right here, Backstage of Behind the Scenes 2. I'm going to interview even more musicians and try to get just as comfortable in that world as I do within the athlete That's world. world. And then what are you going to be when you grow up? Well, you have plans for that yet? Uh, I like to be a journalist and or a sports agent. I think you're probably pretty good on the right track there. You. If you want his book, you can go to, like you said, Amazon. If you want to check him out right there, we've got his email information on the thing. And then teensonsports.com. He's got a lot of his interviews up on there. Check him out. Now, I'm going to go to a break real quick, but don't go anywhere. You know Kirk Copeland's name. You probably know his voice. We're going to hang out and meet the guy. So stay right here for After the Mix. Welcome back to After the Mix. Joining me now is Kurt Copeland from Now 96.3. How you doing today, Kurt? Fantastic. Thank you for having me. Well, I'm so glad you could Great join to us. See you again. That's nice to see you as well. We used to be friends way back in the day. But hang on a sec. I don't <laughs> oh, mean no. to hijack the whole thing, but let's let's flash back just a little bit, okay? Oh, no, no. I don't there's know what a, I got myself there's into. There's a solid vein of pride cruising through my arteries right now. Some of you may can I mention other programs that are long gone? Sure. Once upon a time, there was this little television program on Saturday nights called Harris Lucky Break. And we used to go out to the boat, local folks would sing, and they'd That's do true. their thing, and it was That's great. True. And we had a great time. And I was fortunate enough to host it, and she was fantastic producing Thank the you. program. Thank you. And it, it truly was <laughs> one of the great thrills of my life, and that's where we first got acquainted. And uh, I am so very, very proud. Oh, well, thank everything. you. Between this and, you know, at Scott Trade Center with That's the so nice of you. And here. Thanks. I've lost total control of this now, <laughs> interview. Now back on track. But I <laughs> now had back to on track. So. That's very nice. I appreciate that. Now you're back at now. I am. I'm you back. Have, you, you were in St. Louis for a long, long time. Yeah. You left? Yeah. I, I, well, here's what happened. I received a firing. Let's oh, get that oh good my. clear. <laughs> clear Channel fired me. And, and you know, it, it, it's always... I'm surprised because you were quite popular. I appreciate that. I had a good run. Nine years. Uh, number one for most of it, if not all of it. And that was I, I, and that's totally attributed to the listeners. You know, they like right. me and if they, they don't like me, they don't listen. It's as simple as that. And so thank you very much for listening, everybody. I appreciate that. Um, but Clear Channel, mm, they're right down the street too. Mm. Oh, oh bad. Anyway, they fired me. And, and, and at the time when you get fired, it, it's rot. I can only Nobody imagine that would be, hor be a horrible Your experience. Your whole life right. gets turned upside down. And so it's tough. You're, what am I going to do with myself? So you left. So I had to leave because there was a job opportunity for me in Minnesota. Okay, so you uh, went back because you're originally from Minnesota. I, born and raised in Minnesota. Right. But to me, I always like to kind of refer to like Stan Musial and Jack Buck. Now here are two guys who in this town, right? Right. And neither one of them was born in St. Louis. You see what I mean? That's the, the right. I'm not saying that my accomplishments are going to equal <laughs> I Jack was, Buck. I was wondering where we were going with that one, but okay. <laughs> but as far as you know their hearts. Right. Were for St. Louis, and, and that's so is what yours. my heart is. Leaving this town was the worst thing that ever happened to me, and coming back to this town and going to work for now 96.3, I'm not kidding you. I'm, it was the best thing that's ever happened in my life. That is awesome, and you're on mornings now. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so, so uh, is that fun to get up you, that early? Do you see the bags underneath <laughs> my eyes? Do you see these? Yeah, that's 4 a.m., baby. So that's you're getting up at 10. 4 a.m. so you can do the 6 to 10 on yeah. the morning. So you got the morning drive, you got everybody going to school, going to work. And I got the rest of the day to do whatever the heck I want. Which with. is probably a nap. Yeah. Right? Sometimes I have to nap and then sometimes I go to the horse track and sometimes I play music and sometimes I go to day games. Can't wait for the uh, party. Yeah. Oh. You ready Kurt for the first is, one? Hold on, hold on. Kurt is a huge Cardinals fan and he's got this thing that he's done. Yeah. And even when you when you say it on the radio, I can I can visually see you do it. So mm -hmm. I want to make sure they can see you do it. But before I do it, l let's tell him in the control room, bring the audio down. Oh, about, that's true. Bring my mic right, down about he's gonna be loud 50% in a minute. <laughs> if you're at home. All right, you ready? Ready. Here comes Cardinal uh -huh. Nation. Say it along with me. Bert! <laughs> see? And 
it has to come from like the diaphragm. It does. Like, I've noticed you that tighten it's tighten up the abs. To burst. It's certainly loud, and he does it on the radio quite often, which will, will scare you into paying attention. Burst. <laughs> with passion. She has the passion. I know she's a Cardinals fan too, but I mean, as she is with the Blues. Let's go Blues. I am with the Cardinals, and I love the Blues too. Don't get me wrong. I'm right, a Minnesota right. hockey guy. You know how it is. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, I'm glad we got the first birds out there. Now, are we still using the best friend in the whole wide world? Oh yeah, I mean, nothing changed. Where, where did that come from? Okay, let me give credit where credit is due. We all have our inspirations, right. the folks that mentor us, you know. Exactly. And I was fortunate enough to work with a guy named Tony Fly. And uh, you can look him up if you want, but he was a, a radio DJ in Minneapolis, a huge inspiration for me. He does television now up there. And uh, it was something that he said one time that I thought was just really clever. And he didn't make a very big deal about it. He just mentioned it once in a while. And when I got down here in 2005, I, I mentioned it once or twice. And people came up to me and they said, hey, best That's friend right in the whole wide world. Right. world. Yeah, and I'm like, geez, people really they took to that. Like they that. took to that quick. So lesson number one you learn in this business is when people like something, keep doing it over and over again. So um, how long does it take you to prepare your morning show? Like, what? well, it uh, right now uh, my show is basically I'm, we're keeping it kind of simple. What okay. we call the launch of the station, you know, okay, where right. we want to just let everyone know who's listening. This is what we're all about. Uh, we're playing a lot of music, and we want to make sure that we're playing more music than and all you play other a wide stations. variety mm -hmm. of music as well. Mm -hmm. We wanted to kind of change it up. Uh, the station that I used to be at, there's another station in town, I'm not giving them any points or any credit, but uh, we definitely wanted to position ourselves to being an alternative to those other stations. You know, like if this is what they're doing over here and this is what they're doing over here, we want to be right here. Right, so you're doing a little bit of a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. That's why, I, mean, I know you're a big country fan, Luke Bryan, yeah. Sam Hunt, Lady Antebellum. That's why you'll hear these kind of artists on Now 96.3s because we don't feel, we thought about the listeners, you know, like mm -hmm. they're not going to limit themselves to just top 40 music. They want to hear a few country tunes as well. They want everything. Yeah. I think Kurt could be here and hang out with us all day long, but we have to go, unfortunately. But make sure you follow Kurt. You can follow him on Twitter at Mr. Kurt Copeland. And of course, you're on Facebook as well, right? You have a fan mm -hmm. page on Facebook, mm -hmm. Kurt Copeland. And just, of course- Just do the normal page. That, that fan page is nonsense. You don't I like just, the fan I page. I the real page. I keep oh, it real. Oh, okay. So you yeah. actually have to befriend him on yeah. that. But we'll be real friends, best friend in the whole wide world. Right, right. So we probably should be real friends if you're the real best friend, friend in the whole wide world. Yeah. Well, it's your best friend in the whole wide world, <laughs> Kurt Copeland. Thank you so much for joining me. Great and make sure you tune into him on Now 96.3 in the early morning and on your way to school and work. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.